Thanks a lot, Bas. I put together a webinar on the subject uh, of uh, Corona from droplets uh, to pandemic. And uh, I share now the screen. So um, how we ourselves can determine the spreading of COVID-19. I, um, I start with lessons of the pandemic, how to prevent it. And anxious minds are inquiring today whether another wave of it will come again. You may think that these questions are from today, but actually they are from 1919 from a paper Sopa wrote on the lessons of the pandemic. Those days it was the Spanish flu, now it's COVID-19. And what Sopa figured out is that there are three factors which stand in the way of prevention. First, the public indifference. People do not appreciate the risks they run. The great complexity and range and severity of the respiratory infections confuse and hide the danger. Second, the personal character of the measures which must be employed. Preventive measures devolve upon the persons who are already infected. It does not lie in human nature for a man who thinks he has only a slight cold to shut himself up in right isolation as a means of protecting others on the bare chance that his cold may turn out to be a really dangerous infection. And third, the highly infectious nature of the respiratory infections adds to the difficulty of their control. The period of incubation varies considerably and the disease may be transmissible before the patient himself is aware that he is attacked. And uh, a lot uh, of this, what uh, Sopa wrote in 1919, also applies to uh, COVID-19 in 2020. So how to prevent it? And Sopa had empirical rules from 1919, which those days were found to work. Uh, one rule was it is necessary to shut off those who are capable of giving off the virus from those who can be infected. This is a difficult procedure. They must be controlled by administrative procedures and by the exercise of appropriate measures of self-protection. Suspects should wear masks. There is danger in the air in which they cough and sneeze. Avoid needless crowding open the windows at home and at office. These were empirical rules from 1919. Today, we can explain why these measures work. So uh, I will touch upon three subjects. There is danger in the air in which they cough and sneeze. This is what uh, Sopa wrote. And uh, this uh, brings me to the role of droplets and aerosols. And here you see a sneeze, uh, uh, a photo taken by the group of Lydia Borivia on the left on a scale of, uh, in fact, uh, tens of centimeters, but on the right on a scale of seven to eight meters. It is not only sneezing, it's also coughing, singing, speaking, and breathing, and this will fill the air with aerosols and droplets. Next, on the subject of masks, suspects should wear masks. Why do facial masks protect us. And uh, we will also talk about that. The function of facial masks is in fact twofold. The first function is sun protection, which you see here, um, the infected asymptotic person uh, and uh, the person with, health, with a face mask is better protected than someone without. But the main function in fact is to reduce the contamination with airborne respiratory droplets and aerosols, which you see here. And the third subject I will touch upon is they must be controlled by administrative procedures, policy matters. And what I will show you is daily cases uh, of uh, Corona in million, uh, per millions of people. And here's a table on a log scale. So this is the number of daily cases as function of time from mid February to early June. And you see that different countries do very differently in quality. And uh, you see, 
the difference is huge. So countries which do particularly bad are the United States, Sweden, United Kingdom. Uh, countries which do better are Slovenia, South Korea, Taiwan. And look, it's a, it's a log scale. I mean, between here and here, it's a factor of 100. It's a huge difference. And what strikes is that the correlation between uh, countries uh, which, in fact, enforce face masks, which in general are doing better, and countries which don't do such enforcement and they are doing not good at all. Um, governmental rules can save lives. And here you see the seven day average of daily COVID-19 deaths. The, the, the more red uh, the color is, the more people have passed away. Uh, and you see that different countries have different uh, track record based on different measures they took. Uh, so Sweden, it didn't take too many measures and you see they don't get rid of the virus whereas other countries which in face uh, enforce face masks for example spain which at some point enforce face masks are doing in fact pretty well and uh, it's all blue here uh, that means that the virus is on its way back today's program uh, has three talks from world-class speakers and world experts and we go from small scale to large scale, from droplets to pandemics. So first on droplets and aerosols, second on face masks, and third on epidemic models and their parameters. And the speakers are Lydia Borivia from MIT, Christian Kehler from Munich, and Viola Prisemann from Max Planck Institute in Göttingen. And I'm glad that they are all willing to speak today. So Lydia is in fact from the fluid dynamics and Disease Transmission Lab from MIT. Uh, Christian Kehler is from the Institute of Fluid Mechanics and Aerodynamics from uh, the Bundeswehr University Munich. And Viola Prisemann is from the Complex System and Neural Networks Group at the Max Planck Institute in Göttingen. So what else to do apart from keeping distance and wearing face masks? In fact, there's yet another measure which already had been mentioned by SOPA, open the windows at home and at office. And this is a highly beneficial role of ventilation. There had been a recent paper by the group of Daniel Bond in Lancet, and I thought it would be nice to also add him and give him some time. So what is shown here is the counts of droplets as function of time uh, on a logarithmic scale with no ventilation here. You see that these droplets uh, last for half an hour. Uh, with a poor ventilation, this yellow curve, and with good ventilation here, uh, with good ventilation, in fact, the, the half time is uh, half a minute. Um, and Daniel will show a movie on this subject. So what did we learn in uh, 101 years of research on the subject from the science article in 1990 to the science article in, in 2020, uh, which just came out. I already uh, showed a picture from this, from this Prater et al. article. Uh, and I showed you the empirical rules from 1919. Uh, and in fact, uh, and this is covered in this article by Prater et al. in the science article from 2020. There's now quite some understanding of these rules. And let me put this next to the other side. So we now understand the role of aerosols. Aerosols can accumulate, remain infectious indoor for hours. These are all in fact citations and quotes from this a paper here. Two meter distance is likely not enough under many indoor conditions where aerosols can remain airborne for hours. Measures designed to reduce aerosol transmission must be implemented, including universal masking. Striking differences in widespread adoption of wearing masks likely influence the low number of COVID-19 cases. Proper ventilation indoors matters and vigorous testing and tracing on social distance programs is also very crucial. 